In this video, we'll run through how to edit 360 degree footage of a 360 camera and the key things you need to know when editing in 360. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything that we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Now we've released a lot of videos in the past few months on 360 videos, and it's getting increasingly popular as the technology becomes better and the prices have come down significantly. If you've watched this channel much, then you'll know my thoughts on 360. It's an incredibly powerful medium for really engaging with your audience and inviting them into your world. When it comes to editing 360 video footage, you can imagine things get a little bit different to regular video. Support for 360 is rolling out to many of the major editing software packages. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the process for editing 360 video and my tips to get the most out of 360. And make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna cover the best export settings for 360. Before we start, it's important to be aware of the key differences with 360 video. The first one, is the obvious one, is that we're dealing with 360 video and not regular video, meaning that the resolutions or the size of the video files are normally quite a bit different to what you would find as normally a 1080p or a 4K video file. So essentially what you're editing is a different resolution video file, and you wanna make sure that you're keeping that resolution native, or you're editing in the same format and the same size that has come off your 360 camera. But the file that you're editing is what's called an equirectangular video file. And that's where you've got a video file which is the flattened version of the 360 image. So whether your 360 camera has two cameras, four cameras, eight cameras, or however many cameras you've got in your 360 camera, what you'll be editing is an equirectangular version, so it's the flattened 360 video file from your camera. So what we're not gonna cover here in this video is how to get your video footage into that format if it's not natively done in the camera. Some of the cameras will require some processing or some conversion to get it into that equirectangular format. Um, depending on the camera you've got, We'll leave that one up to you. But what we're talking about here is editing the equirectangular format, which is the process that you'd have to get it to, to be able to edit anyway. And the second thing that you need to be aware of when you're editing 360 video is when you're adding things like titles or animations or graphics to your videos and how they're placed in that 360 space so that they look good when someone's watching them back on their mobile device or with a headset on. Okay, so now that we've covered off on the basics, let's jump into the 360 video editing process. Now we recently did a video on the best 360 video editing software, and I'll put a link up in the cards now if you haven't seen it yet. But in reality, there's not currently a huge difference between the two best options. The two best options, in my opinion, at this point in time, a Cyberlink Power Director for Windows and Adobe Premiere Pro, both Mac and PC. So those are the top two options. And really the process with both of them is pretty much the same. So in this video, we're gonna use Adobe Premiere as it's one of the more popular options. Now again, if you're not using Adobe Premiere, you could grab the trial version and there'll be a link in the description below, or you can follow along in whatever video editing software you're using that supports 360. So it might be PowerDirector, or at the time that you're watching this, there could be others that support it natively as well. I know that Final Cut has it coming really soon. So you can just follow along in your own software even if you don't have Adobe Premiere. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and I've got my 360 video footage imported here. What we'll do now is select the video footage and drag it down to this icon here to create a new sequence or a new timeline with that video footage in it. The reason we do that is so that the sequence or timeline is created with the exact same settings and resolution as our video files. And that's really important for 360 video files as you'll see here, as the resolution of these files is 3840 by 1920. So it's not like a regular video file. These files are a bit different. So you need to make sure that you are 100% using the same resolution that your camera is recording in and that you're editing in that same resolution. But you can see this is the footage that we've got. And this was shot on a cruise back when I was testing out the Samsung Gear 360. So this footage is a bit old now, but you can see the footage that I've got here is just like normal video footage. So you can just treat it as you would normal video footage that you would normally see in Adobe Premiere. We'll lower the quality here so that we're gonna get a bit better playback to probably about a quarter. 
And if we play back the video now, you'll see that these video files are in the equi rectangular video file format. So that means they've already been stitched. And you can see that there actually is a stitch line in the video footage here and here, but this is essentially what you'll be editing off. So at this point, you can make any cuts in your timeline using Command K and picking up clips and moving them around. So you can edit as you normally would and do all of your usual editing tasks. But it's not until you start bringing in text and effects and start looking at how everything looks and works together in 360 video space, which is where it becomes a little bit different. So to do that, you come up here to your playback monitor and hit this little settings spanner. And you wanna choose VR video, then choose enable. And what that's given you now is a 360 view where you can click and drag to look around in 360 space so that you can see what's going on in your video. So you can see that if we press spacebar to play this, this guy here is playing mini golf on the boat. And you can see if I spin around the other way, you can see the pool, there's people in the pool. And we just transitioned then into the next shot as well. So this is 360 video editing. So from here, you can apply things like color correction. So you can come down here to your video effects and under color adjustments, let's add the Lumetri color. Then we come up here to effect controls and you've got the same controls that you would find in any other video clip. So you can brighten and darken your clips and apply all your effects as you normally would. So I'll just remove that now. So to show you how to bring in other graphics or titles into your scenes, I'll just import our standard Primal Video Lower Thirds Super or the title screen. Okay, so here is our Lower Thirds Super. We'll just come back to the start here. So say we wanna bring up the title here at this point. We can do as we normally would. We click and drag our title down into the timeline. And if you hit play, then you're not gonna see it because it's somewhere else in that 360 space. So what you can do is turn off the 360 view and you'll see it there as a normal video file. So if we play that now, then you can see that that animates in at that point. So we can pick it up and move it around as you normally would here. You can come up to effect controls and you can adjust the position and move it around this way, which in turn will move it around in 360 space. Or we can kick back into our 360 view, VR enable, spin around and go and see it. There it is down there. And then we can then move it and reposition it using the same tools here. So we can slide it around left and right and we can bring it up a bit there and adjust the height. And you can see that if we play that back, the animation and everything still works. But what you'll normally find is that the scaling is normally going to be out. So you want to adjust that and scale things down a little bit more than you normally would for 360 video. Because on playback in 360, they are stretched up. So we can reposition that now using X and Y. And now when we play that back and move that around, you can see that the title is playing back and it's actually locked in at that position. And it animates in and animates back out. So that's how easy it is to add in and position your graphic elements and to scale them and position them where you'd like them in the 360 space. So in regards to an actual Adobe title, if you wanna add one of those in, we'll come down here to the type tool. Now we will actually need to turn off the 360 viewing. So we'll turn that off and now you can click with the title tool selected, click on your video and type out your title. Test title, test one, and we can add another title down here as well. Test title two. Okay, so we've got two titles there and we can click and drag and reposition those wherever we'd like. And then when we view them in 360 space with VR enabled, then we spin around, you can see them there, test title two. The other one was back around here on the ground, test title one. So it's really easy to be able to add in your titles in 360 space. And it's all just about being aware where they're gonna show up. And you might wanna kick it into this VR view or this 360 view to be able to see where everything actually is and how they'll look on playback for your viewer. In regards to the actual exporting of your video files, this is another critical step. So you need to go File, Export Media, as you normally would. Now it's really important here, as we mentioned at the start, to match our camera resolution to our timeline resolution to also our export resolution. So you need to match the same across all three. Otherwise your 360 video isn't going to play back properly. So what I like to use here is the YouTube built-in preset for 4K. 
because it's actually 4K 360 video footage that we're looking at here. And then we just need to match the width and the height of our exported file to our camera and to our timeline. So we just tick this little box here. So that'll match the source. And you can see that's removed the two black bars, the top and bottom of our preview there. And you'll also want to scroll down here and tick this little box that says video is VR. And you wanna make sure it's ticked. If it's not ticked, then your video is not gonna be encoded correctly, which means that the metadata or the tags inside the video aren't going to tell places like YouTube, Vimeo or Facebook that your video is actually a 360 video. Now really, if you are editing in 360, Adobe Premiere normally does a really good job at auto detecting that your video is 360 and this should automatically be ticked. But it's a good idea to come down and double check that it's ticked before you export your video. So then you just need to hit export and you will have a 360 video that is ready for upload to places like YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, or any other provider that supports 360 video files. All right, so that was the walkthrough of 360 video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now the fundamentals are gonna be very much the same in other 360 video editing software like PowerDirector, so you can apply those there too. But in regards to the export settings that we promised you at the start of the video, what are the best export settings for 360? Well, there's really two things that you need to keep in mind when you're exporting. The first one is that the quality definitely matters. So the way that 360 works when you're playing back a 360 video is it's actually zooming in on your footage and making it bigger and stretching it up to give it that spherical 360 look or feel. So you wanna make sure that you're exporting at the highest quality possible, which means the highest bit rate possible. So if you've got a 4K 360 camera, then you wanna make sure that you start with the YouTube preset for 4K. And I think at this point in time, that's got a megabits per second or a bitrate setting of 40 megabits per second. I strongly advise to not go less than that unless you really need to keep your file sizes down. Wherever possible, upload the highest quality video that you can to places like YouTube or Facebook and let them deal with the compression beyond that. So once you've selected the preset for YouTube 4K, again, depending on which camera you've got and the resolution that your 360 video is captured at, you then need to match 100% the resolution for the file that you're exporting so that it matches the file that was originally created from your camera. Now, the 360 videos are actually captured at a different resolution than standard video. So it's not a 720p, 1080p or 4K video resolution. They're actually different. So you need to make sure that those match. And the way that you can do that in Adobe Premiere, once you've picked the preset that you want to export to, you can tick the box that says match sequence settings, and that will automatically match the resolution that was used in your editing, in your timeline, which should be the resolution that your camera created the original files at, if you followed the process in this video. And the last export setting that you need to make sure is selected is right down the bottom on the export window in Adobe Premiere, there's a box to tick for VR video. You need to make sure that that box is ticked and that's going to make it easier for YouTube and Facebook to know that the video that you've got there is actually 360. It's actually gonna dump some metadata into the video saying that it's a 360 video. So you need to make sure that that's ticked. Now on the topic of editing, if you're looking to edit faster and get better results without wasted time or any rework, then check out the video linked on screen now which runs through the ultimate video editing process and includes a free checklist guide to help get you started. I'll see you soon.